In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered to his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King of exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethbage, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite to you, and immediately you will find an ash tied and a call with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on as ash, and on a called the foe of an ash. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ash and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, and the city was tried, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, 
And this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, on this day, the church recalls the entrance of Christ the Lord into Jerusalem to accomplish his Paschal mystery. Dear brothers and sisters, we are expecting for this day, for this week, and we know we cannot celebrate Holy Week this year, but the Lord has given us this beautiful chance to sit at home and participate in this Mass. Let us thank the Lord for this special day. As we sit at home the whole week, let us read the Word of God together as a family reflect on the passion of the Lord. Let these days, let this week be a week of blessing for all of us, for the whole family. In a very special way, in this week, as we partake in this passion week, let us remember the people who are suffering in coronavirus. Let us also pray for the repose of the souls of the people who died in this tragedy. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, today, as we heard from the Gospel, like the crowd who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel. Open the gates before him, lift up your voice, enter the holy city. The children of the Hebrews proclaim the resurrection of life. Waving their branches of palm, they cry. Hosanna in the highest. When the people heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they went out to meet him. Waving their branches of palm, they cried. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously granted we may hear his lesson for patient suffering and so made a share in, in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading. I hid not my face from shame and spitting, but I know that I shall not be for seven. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens. He wakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to the smitters and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Second reading, he humbled himself, therefore God has highly exalted him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 11. Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on a cross therefore God 
has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Kindly stand up for the gospel acclamation. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So, the disciples said, as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not, not I, I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who had betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many and for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters, because of you, I will never desert you. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, 
on this very night before the cock crows you will deny me three times peter said to him even though i must die with you i will not deny you and so said all the disciples then jesus went with them to a place called gethsemane and he said to his disciples sit here while i go over there and pray he took with him peter and the two sons of zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated then he said to them i am deeply grieved even to death remain here and stay awake with me and going a little farther he threw himself on the ground and prayed my father it is if it is possible let this cup pass from me it not what i want but what you want then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and he said to peter so could you not stay awake with me and above stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak again he went away for the second time and prayed my father if this cannot pass until i drink it you will be done again he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy so leaving them again he went away and prayed for the third time saying the same words then he came to the disciples and said to them are you not still sleeping and taking your rest see the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed in the hands of sinners get up let us be going see my betrayer is at hand while he was still speaking judas one of the 12 arrived and with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people now the betrayer had given them a sign saying the one i will kiss is the man arrest him at once he came up to jesus and said greetings rabbi and kissed him jesus said to him friend do what you are here to do then they came and laid hands on jesus and arrested him suddenly one of those with jesus put his hand on his sword drew it and struck the slave of the high priest cutting off his ear then jesus said to him put the sword back to its place for all who take the sword will perish by the sword do you think that i cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legion of angels but how then would the scriptures be fulfilled which is saying it must happen in this way at that hour jesus said to the crowds have you come out with the swords and clubs to arrest me as to i were a bandit day after day i sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me but all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled then all the disciples deserted him and fled those who had arrested jesus took him to caiaphas the high priest in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered but peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest and going inside he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against jesus so that they might put him to death but they found none though many false witnesses came forward at last two came forward and said this, this fellow, fellow said 
I am, I am able, able to, to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He, he deserves, deserves death. death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophecy, Prophecy to us, you, you Messiah. Messiah. Who, who is it that struck, struck you? Now Peter was standing outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with a note. I do not know the man. After the little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, Certainly you, you are, are also one, one of them, them for, for your, your accent betrays, betrays you. you. Then he began to curse, and he swore the oath. I do not know the man. At the moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What, what is, is that, that to us? us? See, See to it yourself. yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed. He went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not, not lawful, lawful to put, put them into, into the, the treasury, treasury since they are blood, blood money. money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken to the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So, after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds 
to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let, Let him, him be crucified. crucified. Let, Let him, him be crucified. crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him be crucified. Let, Let him be crucified. So, when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that the riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's handquarters and they gathered and the whole cohort around him. Then they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King, King of, of the, the Jews. Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, which was mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now. And, and we will believe in him. him. He, he trusts, trusts in God. God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted in him the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema, Sabakthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge and filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait. Wait. Let, Let us see, see whether, whether Elijah will come, come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Let us kneel down for a moment.
At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which had been hewn in the rock. He then rolled out a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today we celebrate Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday gives entry to Holy Week. Today our Mother Church enters into Holy Week, the Passion of our Lord. Just a few short months ago, the great powers of the world were confident. America the number one economy in the world was in the midst of one of the largest bull markets in recent history. China, the number two economic power, was flexing its military and economic muscle. Europe was getting ready for another high tourist season in spring and summer. But then, a tiny microbe came along and changed all this. Political leaders, business leaders, scientists were all caught unprepared and confounded. Many people grew ill and died. Economies went in their tailspin. It was like being out at sea, caught off guard by a violent storm. So what are we to learn from this crisis? And how are we to make our way out of it? Perhaps the London season, the setting for this trauma provides some clues to answering this riddle. Today, our mother church enters into Holy Week. This is the climax of the London season and the beginning of the passion of our Lord. The ministry of Jesus was a journey towards a goal that was headed towards Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem was his destination. On this Palm Sunday, we read Jesus was entering into Jerusalem gloriously. In today's liturgy, we face quite a contrast of experiences and emotions. We begin our celebration listening to the story of Jesus being welcomed into Jerusalem with great joy and exaltation. Hosanna! They cried out. Hosanna in the highest! Jesus was treated as he should have been treated. People were excited to see him. And there was much excitement. But this excitement quickly turned to shock and horror as we enter more deeply into today's readings. The gospel culminates with Jesus hanging on the cross, crying out, Eloi, Eloi, Lema Sabathgani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he breathed his last. At that moment, the entire congregation kneels in silence as we ponder the reality of Christ's death. How things can change in one short week? What happened to all the people who were shouting and praising him as he entered into Jerusalem? How would they allow him to enter into this crucifixion and death? The deepest answer to this question is one that we may not expect. The answer is that the Father willed it. The Father willed by his permissive will that so many would, would turn on him, abandon him and allow him to be crucified. This is so very important to understand. At any time, during that first Holy Week, Jesus would have exercised his divine power and refused to embrace his cross. But he did it. Instead, he willingly walked through this week, anticipating and embracing the suffering and rejection he received. And he didn't do so, and even with regret, he embraced this week willingly, choosing it as his own will. Why would he do such thing? Why would he choose suffering and death? Because in the Father's perfect wisdom, this suffering and the death was for a greater purpose. God chose to confirm the wisdom of the world by using his own suffering and crucifixion as the perfect means of our holiness. In this act, he transformed the greatest evil into the greatest good. Now, as a result of our faith in this act, the crucifix hangs centrally in our churches and in our homes. As a constant reminder that not even the greatest of evils can overcome the power, wisdom and the love of God. God is more powerful than death itself and God has the final victory even when all seems lost. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, today's liturgy presents Jesus as a humble servant who conquered the world with his humility. After driving out demons, healing the sick and raising the dead, it was time for the king of the kings to enter the holy city. But to do so, he rode not on the back of the war horse, but a donkey. His companions accompanied him, brandishing not swords, but palm branches. The monument to his victory erected a week later was not an arch, but a crucifix. His earthly beginnings was frightfully humble, and his earthly end would be no different. The wood of the manger prefigured the wood of the cross. From beginning to end, the details are humiliating. No room in the inn. Born amidst the strength of his table, hunted by Herod's henchmen, growing up in the far flanked province of the Roman Empire, Galilee, the land where the country ascend is so thick. You can cut it with a knife. 
How was it that the high priest servant's girl knew Peter was a disciple of Jesus? His hill building ascent gave him away. Jesus' disciples were not cultured, learned men of ability. They were drawn from the low life of a backwater region. That's why on Passion Sunday, we read powerful words of Paul's letter from Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 11. Though the divine word was God, dwelling in the serene heights of the heavenly glory, he freely plunged to the depths of the human misery, joining himself to our frail nature, entering into the turbulent world, as if this act of humility were not enough. He further humbled himself, accepting the status of a slave. His act of stooping down to wash the feet of his disciples was a parable of his whole human existence. For this act was regarded as so undignified that not even Israel's slaves could be compelled to do it. But that's just it. Jesus was not compelled to do it. He willingly lowered himself in his birth in his ministry, in his death. No one took his life from him. He freely laid down his own life. Others did not have the chance to humble him. He humbled himself. In the first reading, Prophet Isaiah presents to us the suffering servant of Yahweh. He did not oppose his perpetrators. He did not cover his face to those who spat on him. He made his face like a flint. We do need this endurance to pain and suffering. There is no crown without a cross. Why did he choose this hard way? Why did he choose donkey? Why did he choose cross? When these things are symbol of shame, I would like to recall St. Paul's first letter to Corinthians, verse 27. God has chosen the foolish things of the world that he may put to shame the wise and God has chosen the weak to shame the strong. In his recent OB and OB message, Pope Francis noted that the COVID-19 crisis exposes our vulnerability and uncovers those false and superfluous certainties around which we have constructed our daily schedules, our projects, our habits, and priorities. It shows us how we have allowed to become dull and feeble, the very thing that nourish, sustain, and strengthen our lives and our communities. Of course, we ought to seek prudently to minimize the damage of coronavirus storm to lives and livelihood. But if we simply try to work our way out of it through our own cleverness, we will have failed to learn the lesson of Palm Sunday. The path to salvation is not one of self-assertion, of relying on our own greatness, but instead through acknowledging our absolute dependence upon God. The Palm Sunday road of humility and obedience is ultimately the only way out of the humiliation caused by the tiny microbe that has brought the world to its knees. We came to this world alone and have to live it alone. Life is filled with struggles. Nobody can deny this. This is the fact of life. Let this week give you divine hope. So often, we can be tempted towards discouragement, and even worse, we cannot be tempted towards despair. But all is not lost for us either. Nothing can ultimately steal away our joy unless we let it. No hardship, no burden, and no cross can conquer us if we remain steadfast in Christ Jesus, letting him transform all we endure in life. By his glorious embrace of his own cross. Amen. Let us all stand and sing the creed. I believe in God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us bring before the Lord all our prayers and petitions. Your response? Lord, bestow your kindness upon us. Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your, your kindness, kindness upon us. us. For the Holy Church, which is the living sign of the active presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the world, that the Church, led by the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, may bear witness to Jesus, its Lord and Master. We pray, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your, your kindness, kindness upon us. us. For Christians who are persecuted on account of their faith in the Lord Jesus, that in their suffering they may draw strength from Jesus, who has suffered and risen. We pray, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your kindness, kindness upon, upon us. us. That the Church, which is the mystical body of Christ, may stand against all forms of discrimination and injustice prevalent in the human society. We pray, Lord, Lord, bestow, bestow your, your kindness, kindness upon us. us. For all the weaker sections of society, such as the poor, the homeless, the sick, and the defenseless, that they may be cared for by God who is kind to all. We pray, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your kindness, kindness upon us. us. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that the celebration of Palm Sunday may help us in our resolve to face trials and difficulties and to have deep trust in God. We pray, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your, your kindness, kindness upon us. us. We also pray for the victims and all of the people affected by the coronavirus disease, people whom we know and people around the globe. Your response, Lord, bestow, bestow your, your kindness, kindness upon us. Let us all pause for a while and pray for our pers personal intentions. Today, as we start the Holy Week, let us bring before the Lord our family that this week may be the week of blessing for all of us together, praying, reading the Word of God, and moreover, reflecting as a family the Paschal mystery of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we bring before you all our prayers and petitions. You know what we need. Look with favor on your family and bestow your endless mercy and blessings on those who seek it. And just as without your mercy and your blessing, we can do nothing. 
May this week be a week of blessing for all of us. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and your way to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty, his death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy God of power and might, earth and heaven sing our song to your name. Is blessed who comes in the name of the Lord. Sing O Son in the highest praise the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all your Creator rightly gives you praise. For though your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power 
and working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us and blood, body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night we, he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He said the blessing and gave to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and bread of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, our Saint, Saint Francis Saviour, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in our presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of your reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Nidhi Nadhan our Bishop, 
the orders of the bishops, all the clergy, and all and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, especially all those families who are connected in prayer through this channel as they participate in this Mass, Lord. Bless each family and each of them. O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at the end, passing from this life, give kind admittance to the kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And the same is come and form with when teaching me sing. A father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we meet the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with the will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be to you. Take the sins of all the world. Lamb of God, you take the sins of all the world. Give us mercy and grant us all the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take the sins of all the world. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, 
not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. My dear brothers and sisters, this is Jesus who takes away the sins of the world, is the king of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. of my people that you do unto me whatsoever you do to the least of my people that you do unto me when I was weary you helped me find rest when I was anxious you calmed all my fears now enter into home of my father whatsoever you do to the least of my people that you do unto me whatsoever you do to the least of my people that you do unto me that you do unto me you do unto me. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from you. From the wicked enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. This announcement is for our uh, parishness. The blessed palms will be distributed when you come to the church next time. The blessed uh, palms will be distributed 
when we when you come for the church in this time and therefore need not worry um, i request all the parishioners to pray this week the holy week and spend the time meaningfully with your family god bless you let us stand for the final blessing let us pray nourished with these sacred gifts we humbly beseech you along that just as as through the death of your son you have brought us the hope for what we believe so by his resurrection we may lead us to where you call through christ our lord amen the lord be with you Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessings. May God, the Father of mercies, who has given you an example of love in the passion of His only begotten Son, grant that by serving God and your neighbor, you may lay hold of wondrous gift of His blessing. Amen. So that you may receive the reward up your lasting life from him through whose earthly death you believe that you escape eternal death amen and by following the example of his self abasement may you possess his share in his resurrection amen and may the blessing of the almighty god the father and the son and the holy spirit come down on you and remain with you forever amen go in the peace of christ thanks be to god Immaculate Mary, our hearts are on fire. That title so wondrous fills all our desire. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. We pray for God's glory, may His kingdom come. We pray for His Father, our Father in Rome. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Dear brothers and sisters, let us pray for the prayers and intentions of our Holy Father of the cardinals and bishops, especially for the intentions of our parish priest, Father Wallen, and all of our parishioners, that God might safeguard us in this important time of strife. Asking him, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily, daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from all evil. evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thee among women, and blessed he is the fruit of your womb, Jesus Christ. Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now and, and ever shall be, be world without, without end. Amen. Amen.